Jack. This is Dad's Talk. We're off to South End today, Jackie boy. Yep, nice little jolly to South End, one of my favourite places. Yep. Um, what have you got in store for me today? We're mate? interviewing Sober Michael, he goes by. The okay. name on um, Instagram. Instagram. He come down to do the dip. Yes, inside. yes, I remember. He turned, yeah. well, how can you forget? He'd done it in a man key. <laughs> yes, he certainly did, didn't he? He's yeah. a good character. He's been sober for quite a while now. Um, he put up a video the other day, which was really nice. I was going to, that's why I was humming and hiring him, whether to say it, because I didn't know whether to bring it up when he okay. he was on there, but we can bring it up again. But um, he, he put up uh, his nephews, he's always been known as Drunk Michael or Gay Michael, but yeah. now they call him Sober Michael. Oh. And that's what he's recognised, and he said on his it he said on his video the other day, and he's all right with that. He likes that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it's nice. I thought that was nice, but we can bring that up again with him. Of course. Um, he's a hell of a character. Yeah, no, I remember <laughs> I met him briefly at the dip that day, and I remember he. I kind of sort of came in halfway through conversation. He was talking about um, some skiing accident or something. Yeah, that he, he, had, broke, he broke his leg while he was skiing drunk, and he yeah. still to this day doesn't remember what happened. And that could have actually killed him. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I remember just I was saying that I was like, wow. Like, I could tell she like he he's been through a lot. Like, yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I'm quite excited for the day. And, yeah. Uh, to go I and think he in. throws his um. I was throws his hat in. <laughs> throws his hat in. I don't yes, know. That's, that's a term. That's a term. term. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. He, he he does a bit of stand up comedian. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up comedy. Yeah. Stand up comedian. <laughs> He's a comic. Uh, yeah. He's a comic, yeah. Well, that beetroot juice has really got to play. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. just trying to make Jack drink the drink I drink every morning, but yeah, I pretty saw my face. Do you want to tell everyone what's in it? Yep. Yeah. Right. You get a spoonful of um, organic wheatgrass powder. Mm -hmm. You get a pinch of, um, or half a tablespoon of turmeric, because mm -hmm. turmeric is one of the best things for the human body. Yeah. But you need to put a bit of black pepper in with it as well because not a lot of people know that but the human body can't absorb turmeric unless it's got black pepper with it right. um, but it's really really health, like healthy for you yeah with the wheatgrass and then I put um, a spoonful of apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. not selling this at all, right? no no keep going yeah. <laughs> and then I top it up with beetroot juice yeah. and I'll mix it up yeah. neck it and um, that's generally how I think I've got my stallion like looks <laughs> Yep. <laughs> anyway, no, I can so, see people writing the ingredients down until I said that yeah, for it. Right. So I was, uh, yeah, no, so I was, I was sat here watching Sam make the drink, and then um, I, I saw him take one big gulp of it, and then I saw his reaction. I was just like, nah, I'll give that a miss, I think. And then he asked me, he's like, Do you want one? I went, nah, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. But, I was mixing it up in the kitchen a couple of weeks back, and my daughter's going, What is that? And I said, Ox is blood. If you want to be as strong as an ox, <laughs> then yeah. you've got to drink the blood from one. Yeah. And I drank it in their faces. And then, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> and then we done a video on it after that for a, yeah. for a laugh. <laughs> All right, then, mate. So we're off to South End then. Road trip. Let's do it. Let's go. Right, we've got Sober Michael here. <laughs> Hello. Sober Michael. Yeah. Nice to see you in, the, in the intro, we, yeah. were, we were talking and I hummed and I was over to say, because I was going to, but I said we could bring it up again when we're here, but I saw your story the other week and I thought it was lovely, where you said about your nephews. Um, they, they call you Sober Michael now. Well, their nephews don't call me Sober Michael, but a friend did when she was trying to explain to someone. They knew a yeah. few Michaels. She said, oh, this is my workmate, yeah. Michael. It's Sober Michael. And I was like, I was thinking, oh, I don't think that's ever happened before. Yeah. It was it used to be like gay Michael or um, drunk Michael, yeah. and my brother had um, like taught my nephews mm. to call me Drunkle Michael because oh, um, yeah. he thought that was hilarious. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it was nice that yeah. those aren't the two identifying. Features and you said at the end of that you went, and, and I, I don't mind that at all like that, and I thought yeah. that was lovely, really nice. Well, it's, it's nice not to be. The mess in the family now. Yeah, <laughs> put the spotlight on my brother instead. <laughs> <laughs> the one who used to, he likes to humiliate me. I was like, okay. Yeah. How are you doing? Table, <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> um, this is the second time we met. You come down, and done the dip with us one time. Um, for anyone that doesn't remember, Michael was the one in the mankini, <laughs> <laughs> but with boxes over the yeah, top. Yeah. It's the uh, mankini. Oh, that makes it better. <laughs> Anything yeah, yeah, most of that man key disappeared, didn't it? it yeah. yeah, most of it. Yeah, it was um, when I took the shards off. It was 
Yeah. It was, it was quite an experience, actually. Quite an experience. Well, I remember right there, it was quite rough down there that morning, wasn't it? Yeah. Where the boys? Yeah. yeah, and I cut my feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, why it was I was a great really experience for you, was it? I've got yeah. some shoes now. I've got some, like, jelly shoes. Yeah. 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 We're going in the sea. We're, we're in South End today. Um, where Michael lives and we're going to go in for a dip up here aren't we get some chips after yeah expect to get a bit muddy yeah, yeah so it's mainly mud around her so. yeah. <laughs> we're going to send we said we'd, uh, me and Michael spoke on the phone before and we said we're going to send Jack in in case it's dangerous and if he survives yeah. then we're going to go in after this is just <laughs> what I've become so, isn't it? yeah it's like, sacrificial community. yeah, yeah. Like, but this is how it is I, like, he doesn't tell me anything he'll just go Jack we're doing this and I'll go <laughs> okay and then it just makes me do that and I'll go alright yeah I'll do that in the sound yeah. yeah everyone needs a jack yeah <laughs> don't think there's any shark warnings today so that's no, right. well, that's right. I love sharks it's just the they're my jelly. favourite of all the animals <laughs> <laughs> so friendly so why why are you called sober Michael then let me take a guess because <laughs> um, I'm not a pisshead anymore yeah. and how, long was, really how long was you a pisshead for oh how long was it oh. <laughs> so, um, about like 18 till 38 good 20 years yeah wow okay so and you've been sober now this time round for 15 months. Yeah, that's incredible. Mate. Yeah. How, how has it changed your life? Um, I haven't been fired yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's always good. Yeah. Um, I haven't ended up in the psych ward, so that's also another positive. Good. And I haven't been arrested. <laughs> three positives. So those are three positives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so my relationship with family is better. Yeah. Good. Um, and I don't live in sort of constant chaos and well, actually I still live in chaos <laughs> but you know like miserable chaos yeah. I quite enjoy some of the chaos yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't it's quite, manageable mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's still chaotic yeah. but uh, in it, I'm not, and when I am down it still happens every now and then yeah. I just bounce back from it so much quicker I can think okay well today's been shit or this week has been um, put myself to bed early and then sort of wake up feeling different instead of yeah, drowning the sorrows and waking up feeling hung over with still all the same sort of misery just extending it for weeks yeah. so yeah I don't try and drink stuff away cause you don't get stuck in that vicious circle you, 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 you can accept that it's just a bad day not a bad life and yeah. move on yeah. and I can have an early night I don't know why but when I was drinking I always used to hate going to bed and so I'd drink until as late as possible like, yeah. be like two or three and then really? think, I better go to bed because I'm up like yeah. at seven in the morning yeah. to go to work yeah <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then, you, then you oh, feel I've got tired. No sleep, and, I have yeah. yeah, which adds to your anxieties oh, and stuff, doesn't it? Cause that lack of sleep and stuff. I, I always try and get a good good amount of sleep. Mm. Now, especially now that challenge is over, I try and make sure I get about eight hours sleep mm. if I can. Yeah, the more sleep the better. Really. Yeah, yeah. So you, there was a, a couple of things we were going to touch on, but you used to drink until blackout a lot of the time, didn't you? And you were telling me a story the last time we met of when you were skiing and you broke your leg, and you can't even remember. Well, um, yeah, I used to drink to blackout almost every time I drank it would be yeah. to blackout. I thought that was fairly normal and that happened to everyone. Nobody enjoyed it. We used to say, like, nobody remembers a good night out. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, mm. and, and you're correct in one way. I did break my leg on a skiing holiday, but I wasn't skiing. I didn't do any yeah. skiing. I've still never had skis on my feet. Um, but I still managed to break my leg. Um, when I went back to work a few weeks later, um, after a few operations, I was like, yeah, I said it was a... A sporting injury, um, <laughs> but yeah. really, I'd, I'd been out and it was my birthday as well. Actually, mm. I'd gone to see my friend, he was in the Italian Alps for the whole season. I uh, still don't know how he afforded that one, but that's a different story. <laughs> and um, on my birthday, it had already been snowing for a few days, too heavily for anyone to ski. Mm -hmm. And then on my birthday itself, it stopped, it was um, stopping snowing that night, and they all wanted to be up really early to catch the. The, the fresh snow apparently that's more fun I don't yeah. know because I've not been skiing um, and so like everyone on my birthday went to bed at nine and that night we'd had a, we'd had a meal together and I discovered sparkling red wine which I didn't know whether that existed mm -hmm. and I hadn't made up my mind after the first litre whether it was um, a good thing or a bad so I had the second <laughs> everyone went to bed except for this one guy who I'd met that week, who was in a group of friends with the guy I was staying with, and the only reason he wasn't going to bed was because he'd already broken his arm. So um, he wasn't going to go out skiing, mm -hmm. so I just went to the bar with him, and they got this drinking game there where you've got to hit a Was it the nail, nail the hammer, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the log? I went skiing um, many years ago, but they, for some reason that's like a popular game in, out there, I don't know why. I wasn't very good at it. No. <laughs> so I had to keep on buying more shots, and I don't remember leaving there. The next thing I remember, 
was sort of lying in the snow in pain, trying to stand up, realising I couldn't because my leg didn't work and it was an agony. And I just had about two foot of snow over my face and I was digging a hole so I could get some oxygen because I thought it's important to breathe. Um, feeling very cold as well, actually, at the stage because I was just wearing a thin jacket. You know, mm -hmm. I dressed up for my birthday in really inappropriate stuff. Yeah. Like, it's thick snow. Let's put on, like, the, uh, the, the nice... Uh, brogues with no grip on them that's yeah, it yeah, yeah, um, yeah. instead of like something with some grip and uh, just like a thin jacket pretend it's not you know yeah, yeah. subarctic out there yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah and every time I dug a space for um, dug some snow out of the way some more just seemed to fall on top did you sober up quickly once you realised you were in trouble well, I didn't sober up quickly um, but you know I, I came to consciousness yeah. <laughs> fairly quickly yeah. um, and I was I, I did think I'd, I'd had it there because I started calling out for help and then I thought because I'm a bit of a geek I used to like languages mm. even when I was really drunk the bit that I'm proud of is I managed to call out for help in English German French and Italian just in case you know any of them yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very or good. at least very that's, good yes. and, and, and it was perfect in my mind I mean yeah. I reckon if you'd taken a recording it'd have probably all just been no yeah. no yeah. but I was producing it perfectly and I was yeah. really proud yeah. in, in my mind and eventually I was found, taken to the hospital. And it, it was a little Italian lady that found you, wasn't it? I don't know if she was little or whether she was big. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't, I don't know she, was, she was Italian, right? Yeah. yeah, I was told. See, I don't remember being found. Yeah. But um, where, where were you? Where just outside the village, I should have. Just was it was it far from this pub that you went to, or this bar that you went to? I think so, because it was outside the village. But I don't really know. Right. All I know is that your Italian must have been good then. Um, yeah, that was <laughs> aiute me. If you ever regular, <laughs> get in trouble okay. in Italy, that's the phrase. Okay, I'll try um, and remember. <laughs> but yeah, but my but friend went. Um, he sort of did wonder the next morning where I was mm -hmm. um, and by the afternoon he started going around and asking if anyone had seen me since the night before mm. and uh, no one had and then called around all the hospitals and eventually Damn. tracked me down yeah, yeah because I hadn't got a phone on me either yeah. so um, so when did they tell you that you'd um, broken your leg oh, I, I was in um, casualty they had run out of bed so it's not just here that, that happens yeah. so I had to wait on a trolley <laughs> overnight yeah. right. um, and then had a scan the next morning well that must have been the agony that night um, they, they gave me some good drugs and the alcohol was quite effective and um, it wasn't comfortable and uh, then I had the operation the next day um, got, I've still got the, the metal plates and screws and things to show for really? it, well, does it yeah, um, I had a total of three it, operations does it still give you any jit? It does sometimes. I'm not very good at going downstairs. Upstairs is all right. Yeah. But I wobble a bit because my left ankle doesn't bend properly. Right. Oh. So I just sort of lose a bit of stability. Right. You've really done a number on it then. Yeah, and then I had to do loads of physio. I mean, I had, I had three operations because they cocked up the operation in Italy. So mm. when I came back to my local so hospital. Lo lower leg. But yeah, there's the yeah. bottom of the leg ankle as well. So I had three bones there. Wow. Um, does it hurt when it's cold? And stuff? It's open. I can feel like the presence of the metal. Mm. It doesn't really hurt. Did it hurt when you come out of the water that time? I could feel it. Like I could feel the metal plates, yeah. in there, but it wasn't painful. No, no, I was more sort of. Yeah. You get that when you go in the water. I discovered you just like feel really cold inside. After yeah. a while, when you come out, I just still felt really cold inside. Mm. I felt like I got cold internal organs, but my skin was warm. It's like yeah, 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 so yeah, that's an experience I wouldn't really want to repeat. And I'd have just, I mean, it should have been a red flag because you'd have thought if you'd broken three bones, and yeah, couldn't walk, that's something you should remember doing. How long did it take for you to get sober after that incident? Oh God, that was back in about two thousand and fifteen. So we've got a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the thing. That you, you, so you, six, you, six years. You said you'd you done that. Yeah, it wasn't for you. Yeah. Um, you hear those sort of stories a lot where you think that, that would stop people drinking, but it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? But I, I do how it works for me, but I, I find it fascinating that other people use different techniques to stop drinking, and I don't think there's a right or no, a wrong isn't. way of doing it, is I there? think you've got to be a bit of a magpie, you know? Yeah. So just try everything yeah. and take the bits from each that work for you. Yeah. And one of the things I really liked about AA um, was like it's got, it has a fellowship, so it's got a ready made yeah. group of people that you can speak to and who are going to understand you and yeah. hopefully encourage you. Yeah. Whereas like, I went, I liked that aspect of it, but I just wasn't making progress and I stopped going. Yeah. 
I just gave up because I thought, oh, maybe I'm not an alcoholic, really. Yeah. I just need more practice at drinking in moderation. So I yeah. tried another few years at drinking in moderation until I ended yeah. up at the local drug and alcohol centre and needed a Yeah, is that the same detox. sort of thing where there's a fellowship there? Or, or no, so no. that's what, in my, what I liked about it was they've got like a, quite a scientific approach to it rather than a... AA, I think you could describe as having like a spiritual approach yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, with the low... Different areas do different programs, but right. in this area it was called um, Smart Recovery, mm-hmm. um, and it's, it's largely sort of CBT based. Right. And it's got a sort of a clinical approach, and you also got access to like the al- they've got alcohol doctors and nurses. So I was able to be prescribed meds that and go under a um, a detox because mm-hmm. I'd become dependent by mm-hmm. the time I gave up. Because yeah. if I wasn't drinking, I was shaking, I'd had fits. And that can be quite dangerous. And that can, it can. If you just go cold, cold turkey from when you're dependent, yeah. then you can, and especially as I was sort of living at home, living on my own, yeah. they, they, they won't detox you, sort of do a home yeah. detox if you're living alone, because if you have a fit, no one's going to be there. Yeah. So, um, I, I went to a thing called Turning Point once and they said yes. they, were, they were trying to wean me off alcohol, but that didn't work for me. I had mm. to go cold turkey and I'm not recommending anyone do that. But for me, they said you'd have two beers at this time. Yeah. It was, and, and I was doing a lot of drugs at the time as well. So, it, so the drugs come straight off and then I was just trying to have two beers at a certain time, and then two beers at a certain time, two beers. So the trouble me. is, when I had them two beers, I'd drink the other. Yeah, I was off off and running again, so it didn't work for me. But there's, it's it's about finding ways that work for, yeah, for each individual, isn't it? it didn't but work. I for love me. that thing you're doing, the sober friend. Sober so friend finder. Yeah. Though all, all of this actually goes back to what I just said about AA. Mm. So what I liked about AA was there was a fellowship. Mm-hmm. Um, what I liked about smart recovery was its approach but I'd go to sort of meetings and I'd leave and then it's like okay well now all my mates are going out on Friday and Saturday night and I'm not trying to drink so mm-hmm. I've actually got no mates left now because that's how I formed my friendships yeah. and whilst I was trying not to drink I was pretty much on my own and I thought oh we should we still have that social element so I started running um, some uh, social events in South End. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see if anybody else wanted to sort of do socialising without booze like if there's a night cafe mm-hmm. and got a good response to that first one had about 40 people turn up which mm-hmm. for a town or oh, city now mm-hmm. the size of South End I thought was pretty good and it showed that there was an appetite for it and especially at the time because we were just coming out of lockdown and I think a load of people mm-hmm. had uh, sort of re-evaluated their drinking during yeah. lockdown like things that were sort of unacceptable yeah. to them before like drinking before 5pm yeah. um, and drinking at home all mm. of a sudden those have become a norm because yeah. they're so bored and, and but, formed habits for a lot of people yeah they? and yeah. what the thing about alcohol I've sort of come to realise why we love it so much is um, one of the reasons is it makes um, doing nothing or doing very little fun yeah so because like, if you look at people when they're drinking they're not actually doing anything interesting. They're mm. all talking over each other, yeah. um, repeating Pretty themselves, yeah. not taking. But what they're doing is actually really boring because mm. they've got alcohol. It makes boring stuff yeah. fun, but you're still doing nothing. Yeah. You're still being boring. Yeah. It's just your brain's yeah uh, uh, high function. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I think you're exactly right in what you say there. Definitely, and it helps you to tolerate the people around you if you don't like particularly like them yes. so a lot of the people I'd go drinking with I was thinking oh, yeah. I wasn't particularly fond of them but I didn't, I didn't really you know care after we had a few drinks yeah. did you have like a, a group that you were sort of this whole period of, that you were in, um, you were drinking was there like a core group that you'd go out with or was it anyone or was it oh it was anyone I mean sometimes I'd often since I was 18 I'd often just go out on my own mm-hmm. you see because if you want to go out with someone else you've got to plan something that's, mm. that's just like too much organisation yeah. for me <laughs> um, and if I went to the same places often enough I knew that I could just turn up and I'd know people there and latch on to them yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh no so like, that's, I think that's one of the appeals that people have of going to their locals yeah, they don't yeah. have to actually plan anything there'll just be people there that they know and can chat to when they turn up yeah. um, but I had fewer and fewer people who were willing to tolerate my company towards the end like I wouldn't because like yeah. the only people who are going to tolerate you when you're like um, a leery drunk um, are very forgiving people and usually they're forgiving because they're in exactly the same boat like, yeah. I tolerate complete arseholes because I was being a complete arsehole myself yeah, <laughs> and yeah, it's yeah. like any sane person yeah. would say oh, I don't, I've had enough of this mess yeah. and they'd move on yeah. so 
um, yeah. I tend to sort of attract and be attracted by people who are similar to myself. That, that's that, that's what I always say as well. It's no coincidence that when I was personally drinking and taking drugs, I was hanging around with people that were drinking and taking drugs. And in the chaotic, now I'm sober. I hang around people that are sober. I think yeah. you, you give out what you what you. But you draw in what you give out. It's a law of attraction, sort of. Yeah, ways, exactly you know I mean? that. Yeah, mm. yeah. What's so what's next for you then? Oh God, that's a question. <laughs> um, I don't really know. I'm winging it most of the yeah. time. Um, I know I've got I've got to get a new job. That's quite important. But I keep on forgetting about that because yeah. my contract ends in August. So okay. I'll find a find a job. What so are you I hoping can pay to do? Some, oh, I don't. I don't like work. You, 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 <laughs> you, you do a bit of stand up for me. Comedy, don't oh, you? Oh, just amateur, yeah. yeah I would you ever think bit. about getting into that? Because I follow you on Instagram and you are fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you are brilliant. I actually, like, you. I was telling Jack earlier, your stories, I look forward to them because they actually cheer me up. Do you know what I mean? If, oh, I'm, like, if I'm feeling yeah. down and that, I think you're absolutely brilliant and you're... And your comedy is 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 great as well. Like, Do, doesn't really translate onto the stage, I'm afraid. <laughs> Why is that? I've done a couple. Um, I just sort of forget. Well, I've done... I've done a bit of improvised comedy. That's mm. how I started. Did, did you to used to do it, sorry, when you, when you drunk, did you used to do it? No. Um, I, I, when I was drinking, I did very little other than drink. Yeah. Um, but I, and I, there's a local improvised comedy club that does courses, and I knew a few people had done them, and I always thought, oh, I'd love to do that, but there's no way on God's green earth I'm going to get up on a stage. Mm-hmm. So, no, I'm not going to do that. I'd like to do the course. Yeah. Um, and then when I was sobering up, I was like, I didn't realise until that point actually just how much I suffered from anxiety, social anxiety, Mm -hmm. because I always thought I was like the life and soul of the party, but that's because I was pissed. Mm. I'd go into the pub, group of uh, room full of strangers, I didn't really like it, but within a couple of minutes I got a drink in my hand and then I drank away all that anxiety and now Mm. I'm going out and I'm feeling exactly like I did when I was a teenager going into a room full of strangers. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've got to actually face it because I can't drink it away. I can either go home and I was fed up, I was bored of hiding away all the time. Mm. So I said, no, I'm just gonna learn to um, be more confident. And that's, and I think we view like confidence as a quality that you either yeah. have or you don't. Yeah. But I think, change my mind on that, it's more of a skill that it you can skill. improve with 100%. practice. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I've always enjoyed watching the comedy and I thought I'd quite like to have a go at it, but not on stage. So I thought, why don't I actually put myself on the course, scare yourself a bit, because mm. the only way to overcome fears is to confront them yeah, and, I just, thought, and I thought yeah. I won't commit myself to like performing at the end of it because you could pull out if you wanted to you could mm. either perform or not but then on the um, third, there's a 10 week course after the 10 weeks there's a showcase and I, I was thinking this is really weird I'm not nervous normally I'd be cacking myself mm. um, and there's like a couple of other sort of guys around me and they were all like downing a pint for confidence like you could see they were sort mm. of really nervous shaking drinking and I was just thinking my expectations are completely changed. I was there to prove to myself that I could do it. Mm. That all I wanted to do was get up on the stage, survive, and show that I'd faced a fear. Excellent. And where, whereas before, I think my mindset would have been, "Oh, I've done this ten-week course. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd better be hilarious and be the funniest there, and otherwise it's all going to be a disaster." Like I'd like put a load of pressure on myself, yeah. and then as a result of that, I'd shake, I'd stammer, mm-hmm. um, and I'd fall apart. Mm. And then I'd have a real knock to my confidence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because um, yeah, I'm, sort of, I'm quite musical. I played in an orchestra before, and it's, it was the same thing there. Um, I would be fine when everyone's playing, and I'm I'm playing fine and getting the. Note. And then if there's a solo passage, it's like all of a sudden the focus is just on you. I just fill with panic, mm. dread, mm. have a bit of a panic attack, and just fuck the whole lot up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just when it's important because yeah. I need people looking at me. And it's I like, get that. I, do, I think you've um, as excellent what you've done there, and to, to face that fear and, and overcome something that you built up for a long time. You've never done something. It's like strange before, that right? he says it because we're literally just having a conversation yeah. about that in the car yeah. on the way up here, but, and we were saying. I said on the other side of of fear is growth, mm. and I've got a real phobia but since my kids are born as well of heights okay and we've just decided on the way up here i'm going to jump bungee out of an airplane oh, well he's, oh, okay. he's done a bungee jump but I'm, we're going to jump out of a plane yeah. because i want to ta- uh, this year i've set myself goals and i want to take face me okay. feels like you just done but heights make the one that takes three people 
you, are you up for it? I'd be up for it. I'm yeah, where we said, yeah, so we we're doing yeah, the group, aren't we? Yeah, really? where we said we were going to get a few people involved, yeah. but we said it live on air now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a commitment, isn't it? Yeah, are you but up for that? Are you? I am. Yeah. But yeah. I think that whole that whole aspect of um, setting yourself goals and challenges and pushing yourself, I think that's so important. So important. Like I said, we, we discussed it on the way up here, but I think very similarly to you, um, I was very much an introvert when I was young, young lads very much in the background I'd tag on to the kind of popular people and mm. I played a lot of sports so I'd always be in with the kind of cool guys and to be fair that sounds like the polar opposite but, 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 but <laughs> very much um, my confidence was I had no mm. confidence anything that was sort of pinpointed on me as a solo person yeah. like public speaker dread no can't do that not at all um, but then eventually I just started to build this up and I started doing little things and going out of my comfort zone and then um, yeah, no. A few years ago, ended up doing some amateur dramatics and done some okay. musicals and done all sorts of stuff like this, which is nothing, you know, in comparison to what the way I used to be. Mm. Christ, I, there was no chance I'd do something like that. But the growth that I had from that, it's like now, like with, uh, with my work, quite often I'm st- stood in front of a group of people and giving briefings and and doing you know meetings and leading meetings and stuff. I don't even bat an eyelid, and the thought of I sort of think back to where my mindset was when I was a kid, and if myself as a kid could look at me now, mm. uh, that's leaps and bounds, mm. and, and and that only comes from pushing yourself into into stuff that you're not comfortable with. That's brilliant. Like jumping out of an airplane. Yeah. So yeah, do stuff that scares you. Yes. Yeah. Although, yeah. actually, um, I did I did give that advice. To my my partner, um, is also uh, like heavy drinker, mm-hmm. so in recovery, and um, I, I said to him that you should why don't you try stuff that scares you because he's like he won't even get I was hoping that he'd say yes and then maybe get on a bus yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> he'd take that sort of yeah. social contact out the bed no um, I thought he'd like ignored it all yeah. and a couple of days later I was like postman was there sort of, or courier and I was like what's this this package and I open it up and he's bought a bloody tarantula and through the post, a mail order tarantula. It was like in this little pot, like a urine sample pot. Oh so I was like, what's this? And so he had listened to me, and his interpretation of do something that scares you was to buy a tarantula because he's terrified of spiders. <laughs> and it's, it's over in that tank over there. Oh, shit. <laughs> Really? Spiders, yeah. spiders don't normally bother me, but that's no. a hairy big one. <laughs> but that's him overcoming. Well, that yeah. was the idea. It's, um, I'm not sure it's entirely worked yet because, like, it has to eat crickets, and he's scared even of the crickets. So, like, a cricket got out, and he like ran out the flat screen, and that wasn't too good. Like, so, I have to, I have to c- catch crickets and put them in. Oh, I in saw the tank. your story. There was crickets everywhere, weren't there? Oh God, yeah, because one of my cats found yeah. the crickets managed to knock over like the container that had all the crickets in and we had like oh. 50 crickets jumping around the flat <laughs> and they were like, that's, that's own we could hear them singing at night I felt <laughs> like I was on holiday it was quite you know, nice you put, in some me, ways. You, you put a video up and I could hear all the crickets in the background <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I felt like I was in Spain you know like you get to sing yeah. harder at night yeah. it was quite nice because yeah. it was like it was, it was in winter at the time and it, it, it did warm me up a bit but now you have a pet tarantula yeah, there was a pet tarantula. That is the downside of it all. Yeah. Um, he's not particularly. F- he did escape as well, which wasn't only slightly. Well, I had to catch him with a <laughs> catch him with a uh, jam jar. Oh, you caught him. You got a pair of spiders <laughs> as well, have you? I, I didn't think I did. <laughs> but really actually, there's a spider, and then there's a fucking tarantula. Do you know what I mean? It's it's what a spider, mate. Mate. It's, apparently, it's like a bee sting when he bites. Should we hold and it? It's in like a bit? Met- no, you wouldn't want to hold it. No. I don't pick it up. A, it's too fast, and B, like the. Um, the, the hairs on it, it can it can fire those and that sort of also stings. You know, it can shoot them like a porcupine. Oh, really? It's not particularly fair. You're lying. I'm oh, not yeah. lying. Is that true? Is yes, it? they can fire their hairs. <laughs> what? Is that it's, all it's not, this isn't, or just that No, uh, not all, but quite a lot. <laughs> No, so no, I, d- I don't handle just, this I'm one. just witnessing his anxiety <laughs> kicking in here. I'm amazed by it. <laughs> so oh, I say you should do something that scares you. But I, think I don't need to start digging a bit more. Yeah. Yourself <laughs> yeah. what other you told have your you partner to get do something that scares him, and he's brought a fire um, a, a <laughs> tarantula that fires its own. <laughs> yes. Uh, so like, stop giving yeah. people advice. <laughs> That's what I do something that scares you. Maybe like hold a tarantula. Yeah. <laughs> don't live with a fucking tarantula. <laughs> Because it is going to escape. It's on the yeah. extreme end of that. Yeah. I know, and then when it did escape, I've got these cats here. I was thinking, oh my god, a cat's going to pounce on the tarantula. The, the cat's going to get hurt. The tarantula's going to die. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. 
It, can, can we just double check it's in there? It is. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's serious. I was like, fuck it out, sir. There's a spider behind it. It's hiding behind the back of it. Mm-hmm. I thought I'd lost it earlier. I did actually double check. I was thinking, how could a tarantula get out there? Yeah. And that's why I thought about that. Like, there's a hamster in the other room and it managed to bite its way all through the yeah, cage. Like Dr. Doolittle. No, I thought it was like Shawshank Redemption. And it'd been like hammering away every night and then putting a poster of Rita Fooled Hayworth you, yeah. up, like covering yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then, I was, and then I, was, oh, that was what a night that was, yeah. because at the same time, we, I, one of the um, cats brought, I found a rat and brought it in, and there was a rat loose in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm terrified of rats. That is, that's why I wouldn't I live with like rats. I would not. Hamsters, fine, because <laughs> they haven't got tails and they're cute. <laughs> but a rat, that is just. My mum's got a massive phobia of rats, and oh. that's the tail that she don't like as well. That's the tail. Yeah. That's the tail. And um, so I've got rid of that, but there's still a noise behind the. Uh, like the washing machine and the dishwasher mm. and I had my mate Tris round and he's not scared of anything yeah. just maybe lions or something <laughs> and, um, and he goes I think it's actually a hamster has got out I was like no way can a hamster get out and then found it yeah, so I had so we had rat and hamster in the kitchen at the same time <laughs> <laughs> That must, that must I'm have been a weird conversation between the two of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it certainly yeah. was, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. drama still happens. So. Yeah. I yeah. thought the drama would end when I stopped drinking. Yeah, you know, like, it just gets... Uh, <laughs> got rodent warfare in the kitchen. That was interesting what you said before as well about um, the co- you, you thought you were competent, but it, it was the drink probably. Yeah. Because, and didn't realise how so... And, what was it? <laughs> socially anxious? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You didn't realise how socially anxious she was because I was the same and uh, and I was talking to Jack about it before and I went through this stage when I stopped drinking whereas when I saw people that normally see me as the confident mm. one because I've got a line of Charlie up my nose or a drink down me where it took it stripped all me what the what the drink and the drugs give me, it stripped all of that once I'd sobered up and I, I went through a stage of where people would come up and talk to me and I'd feel really awkward just in Morrison's and I'd go really red mm. and then I'd get to a place where I was um, conscious of doing that and fearful that I was going to do that so then when someone came over to me it made it even worse and I looked like a right weirdo where I'd just literally run off from people <laughs> every mid conversation well, with get, me I get that mate yeah. I, I still get that That you know that is, I don't know whether it's like you, you kind of fail safe like I go back to that and that some days I don't mm. want to talk with anyone it's yeah. like I'll go out and I'll purposely like have your hood up or put a cap on yeah, yeah. Hmm. go to the shops I don't want to bump into anyone like a celeb yeah. <laughs> yeah, almost it's like I don't want to I don't want to talk with anyone I don't want to see anyone that I know because yeah. I don't want to talk, I just want to live in my own little world yeah, yeah. And, just, yeah. and just switch with off the size things. of you and that though people know it's you yeah, that's, that's why it's difficult yeah. right? but that's, um, I, I totally get that yeah. and you know I am quite an outgoing person and no yeah but some days person. some days and I don't think there's anything wrong with that we try and over analyse that that why we're feeling that way, but sometimes it's okay to just yeah. have what a day on your own in it and just do what your own thing. Yeah, I like see my ideal setup is I like being sociable now. I like meeting. I go for like breakfast meets. Mm-hmm. These breakfast meets are the best. Yeah. You haven't even got any piss heads around you because yeah. most people don't start drinking until at least eleven. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So breakfast meets nice with other sort of people who aren't drinking. Yeah. Um, but I do, I like to be very sociable and then ideally in my mind I'd, I'd like to live in a little cottage in the woods a little mm. hut in the woods so yeah. I could go and have all the um, yeah. sociability that I want and then just, just be completely just, on my own yeah, just be sort yeah. Of yeah it's nice I, I actually like nature. my own company now and for a long time I was mm. trying to escape that do you know what I mean same but, yeah my my drinking and drug taking towards the end just left me completely isolated from everyone with the curtains yeah. drawn but I, I was miserable but now I can sit quite comfortably in my own same here I don't mind being on my own because no. like my brain's a bit weird and I don't actually be, no have shit. to do anything to, I know I don't have to do anything to entertain myself I can just be yeah. sitting there sort of thinking about stuff mm-hmm. yeah. um, and then I'll just sort of be laughing to myself it happened on the train the other day I was just sort of thinking about a few things entertain myself and I was just laughing standing up on the train I hadn't even got anything in my ears and I was thinking oh my god I look like a right weirdo now don't I <laughs> but I used to hate being on my own and my partner said to me once um I, I sometimes I drink because it feels like company mm. and I thought there's so much truth in that if I was on my own if I were, had a drink I wouldn't feel like I was on my own anymore yeah. I'm just like I've got some company just in this yeah. bottle here for a while yeah and it's escape from reality in a bottle really isn't it yeah because so. I, mean, I used to 
I used to drink mainly just sort of going out, but then I used to have too many accidents or not make it home and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, hmm, going out's a bit dangerous, even in like the town centre, because there's often disaster, or I completely embarrass myself in front of people mm-hmm. that know me, because I thought I work in this town as well, mm-hmm. and I lose all my money. It's just so I thought if I, um, instead of not drinking or. I couldn't drink less. I tried that one. It just yeah. always ends up the same. Yeah. I'll, I'll drink, but at home, and then I haven't got to worry about getting home. Mm. So it's like, I wouldn't, and then that was set a bit of a, that became too usual for me. Yeah. I think, should I go out this Saturday? No, no, I'll just, and it costs less as well. I can save money, which means I can drink more mm. and won't have any of the worry about, yeah. I'm less likely to get injured and embarrass myself and yeah. then that became the, the usual thing others would go out and I'd stay at home and drink although sometimes after I'd had a couple I might then go out to the pub side actually I'm fine yeah, yeah. so I'd like had two bottles of wine and then let's go into town and yeah, yeah yeah, and then you put yourself in danger and yeah yeah no, I get that so you've come a long way and and I, and I think what I like about you so much as well is that you you um, you recover loudly to inspire others and and um with the stuff you put on your your Instagram, so relatable that I know that a lot of people that are, are, are probably most, so there's a lot of people out there considering getting sober, and when they see how well you've done from it, that'll inspire others to do the same, which is which is brilliant, really, because you're not just changing their lives; you'll be changing their families yeah, and that's stuff. That's mad how easily you can inspire people just yeah. doing something that you find quite yeah. mundane or mm. normal, or you're just whatever you're putting out there yeah. into the world. It really can help. Them. Yeah, and, what, and, and you've helped me because even though I'm doing well in my recovery and I feel very strong, you're still in recovery and you still need little boosts to think. And if I'm having a bad day, like I say, I also look at your videos and other people that do great stuff for sobriety. And it gives me a little boost, like, yeah, and gets my sober head back on if I'm feeling a bit low and I'm in a little wobble. There's things that you can go to when mm. I go to my recovery or I'll go to mm. pages like yours. and, just and phone it, someone. Yeah, just bring someone, yeah. And, and yeah. That, and, yeah d- is that what you do to cope as well? Then you call other people in the same, same boat? Or do, do you still talk to anyone you met in recovery or, do, or is it people you meet at this, uh, this place? What are your coping mechanisms? I don't know what my coping mechanisms are so much because I don't find like I'm having to cope as much most of the time. Oh, my coping is sleeping. If I feel like it's been a bad day, I just get myself to bed early mm. and think I've put, um, there's a good chance I'll wake up feeling better mm. instead of drinking and dragging it out for as long as possible. Yeah. Um, and often that works, but I've got a better social life now than I did when I was um, drinking. It's just... I'm socialising with different people and it's mainly during the day as opposed to the evening. There's mm. nothing wrong with having an early night. The week. It's like this law, isn't it? It's Friday and Saturday. You've got to go out at night. Yeah. Well, you, you don't. You could actually get up early, have a full day, mm. you know, sort of go like hiking, do something that, go out to nature and stuff, really enjoy it, mm. and then go um, to bed with a cup of tea. Yeah. But people accuse you of being boring if you do that because well, yeah. like the norm is just to feel minging yeah. all Saturday morning mm. um, just get yourself feeling human and do it all over again on the yeah. sat- just drink and talk over each other yeah. on a Saturday night yeah that's, that doesn't that's sound boring. boring to me at all <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that, yeah. what, people just see going out every weekend and drinking it as the fun thing to do and I actually got called boring once for ordering an orange juice and lemonade by an older bloke and it, that just baffled me how I was getting called a weirdo because he mm. said a weirdo as well. It's a bit weird, and I thought I'm not the one drinking a toxin, <laughs> and I've chose to drink an orange and lemonade. But the way people perceive it is that you're the odd one. Yeah, which well, is interesting. Well, I think. people say, don't they, to sort of don't trust someone who doesn't drink, which is a bit weird. Cause yeah. like, they don't say don't trust someone who doesn't take heroin, for example. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a drug, it's a legal yeah. drug, but it's a... But from the what I can powerful. say to that is, you shouldn't legal. trust me when I'm drinking, <laughs> because I manipulate... Because <laughs> when that bloke as well, we were talking about that orange juice, was saying, just have a half, and I was thinking... If, if I, yeah, yeah. And if I just had a half, I'd end up having another pint, and then I'd manipulate every mm, penny out of yeah. your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're lucky I don't just have a half, and only have me boring orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just having... I mean, like, what yeah. satisfaction do you get out of that because you, yeah. it makes you want another one if you did have a half and then stop mm-hmm. and you've got the same sort of brain as me it's like you just really want another one you spend yeah. the rest of your evening mm. craving it so yeah. like so I heard um, somebody I know said well like just having one or two and then stopping is about as satisfying as just having the tip 
it's like, <laughs> fair it's enough. Like, oh, oh, nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true though. I just, I never used to drink. Some people obviously can have a pint and it just and just feel the benefits of of relaxing or something. Whereas me, that would send all my like. Mm. Like all my senses go in as soon as I had one pint, that was it. And if I had one pint now, be four months before I stopped. Yep. Yeah, that was for me. Yeah, and I just wouldn't. I just, yeah, I just wouldn't be able to stop. Yeah. And, and it'd start off where I'd have one or two pints. Well, not one or two pints. Sorry, I'd have I'd have a pint, and then I'd go and get like eight cans, and then it'd be eight cans for about three or four days, and then it would it would progressively get worse and worse and after about a week I'd be back on the cocaine smoking 20 fags a day and I'd be drinking gin in the evening beer in the day and, it, and that's how it, that's how it works for me and I always just say it's not the drink that's the problem for me it's the drugs well you see <laughs> I managed not to be a day drinker really. yeah <laughs> even at the weekends I didn't like I didn't like drinking during the day through yeah. the sunlight yeah it's yeah. just like it just yeah. give me a headache so yeah. I'll just binge it all in the evening yeah. Yeah. I might even go out and have a few pints and sometimes manage to keep me, not embarrass myself yeah. and then I'd go home but I'd be going home via the 24 hour off licence yeah. so they'd seen me leave like, being fairly respectable but then I'd get home either on my own or with one friend and it's like with a litre bottle of Smirnoff <laughs> yeah yeah. that's weird you say that as well because in my the way my head was thinking I, I, when I was at my worst and I actually got told not to come into work for a bit and I had six weeks off and, and um, I was drinking and uh, taking drugs then like that uh, escalated even more but in my mind I, I thought I'm not going to get some beers before midday <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I'd be sitting there waiting until midday and then when it turned to midday I thought that's an acceptable time to go and get beer that's how my mind was working and I'd walk to the shop and get a load of beers and I, but, that, but I was so worried about what other people thought but in the craziness and the madness of it all I negotiated in my own head that midday was insane right. yeah. 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 yeah crazy mm. crazy I haven't well, got a problem if you're not drinking yeah. although sometimes I did drink there's a, quite a few occasions actually where I sort of I'd convinced myself that um, it was a bank holiday weekend once and it was the morning thing. I've got nothing planned for the whole weekend, so I can just come out drinking all weekend. Mm. I was like, well, it's, uh, it's the Saturday now. I could start now. I was like, oh, I've got some cider, and cider is essentially just apple juice, so you can have that with breakfast. So I allowed myself to have breakfast cider sometimes. Mm. <laughs> so that will stop the shakes. Yeah. <laughs> then you can go out and start all over again. Mm. It's just apple juice. What's yeah. the difference? Mm. How um, through this period from you know, when you started drinking? to when you got sober how, how did your family respond when, when was the first did they did someone sort of speak to you about were they concerned um well for the first time i tried to give up the booze i was um i was living with my parents and um, it was just before lockdown the first one and um i i just sort of i'd had I'd reached the end of my tether my dad had had to come out and sort of rescued me from the hospital or like found me sort of on the street and stuff at two in the morning you know it was mm. when I'd got in trouble yeah. and so it's like it was no secret that I would got a drinking problem that got out of control so um, I just the last time it was just before lockdown and I'd been out for two days and I just I was I just wanted to die at that point and I was lying on my sofa which was over there then that's why I'm fighting there <laughs> <laughs> and I was lying on my sofa um, f- f- just shaking and sweating and I only got up to wee or get water I couldn't even stand for the television to be on and I was awake for like the whole 24 hours just mm-hmm. lying on that sofa and it seemed to last forever But and then after that I called my dad and said look I can't do this on my own do you mind if I stay with you for a bit and so I did and then the week later it was locked down and that made us like well might as well stay for the three weeks that we've been told to stay inside mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three months later we've still not been told we can go outside yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I stayed with them for a good while and that's when I first st- I started seeing a lot of changes just in that period my mm. dad was dreading me going over and I wasn't exactly looking forward to it mm. um, I suppose I distanced myself a bit from them because I was trying to hide my behaviour from them so mm. Um, but we both we really loved each other's company and I was actually being productive I was helping out I was often making the lunches and dinners for them mm-hmm. my dad's into his gardening and stuff so I'd help him with that and mm-hmm. actually finding I enjoyed it yeah, we had nice. a really good laugh and we loved each other's company and when I said look as much as it's been nice we're, I've actually got to get on with 
my life a bit now, Course, and I've yeah. got to learn how to do this on my own. Yeah. And so I sort of moved back to my flat, and he was like a little bit tearful because he didn't really want me to go, and I didn't yeah. really want to go either. Yeah, so what we thought nice. was going to be horrid, we, it was like it's always going to be like a really special time yeah. in my life. Both my parents, my dad and my stepmom, they're retired. And yeah, that's the it's nice to spend that amount of time with the beauty them. that sobriety gives you isn't it? it yeah. gives you your presence back to your family doesn't it because I moved out of home when I was 18 mm. and that's the first time I spent a significant amount of time with them and I was 38 then um, and it was yeah it was just a really nice time in my life I did eventually after I'd been sober seven months went out to the pub and uh, I'd uh, decided I could have just one at the end of the night. I'd been there all night and then towards the end, I was like, this cocktail menu has been staring me out. Mm. Um, so I thought I'd have just one, which led to two. And then I went round my friend's house and then just, I drank for four months. Mm. It was just like that. Mm. Got into mm. some scrapes during that time. When um, you relapse, it, I, I think it's a lot worse as well, isn't it? That you, you do, it just escalates into something completely yeah. different as well, doesn't it? It's, you took me to a new low, yeah. To the point where, like, after three months, um, I mean, I'd been sort of had some odd trips to um, the psych ward when I was drinking before because I'd sometimes like drink too much and I'd feel awful the next morning to the point that I'd like take an overdose of something. Mm. Yeah. Um, this time I, d I did the same thing, but I was also um, I was beginning to get psychosis. Yeah. Um, I was I was just pacing around in my flat, just walking around in circles sometimes just in the lounge speaking to myself and I was beginning to hear things that weren't there mm. and I just completely was it just it. drink with you then or, or did you do anything else um it was mainly drink it was the drink it was the one that got me yeah um I did I dabbled in other drugs the one that I never understood was why people were so like I, I never got anything out of cocaine like people would be taking it and I think oh, there's no rush yeah. I got no rush from it and I've, I've beginning to understand maybe why now yeah and that's like um recently i, I had a friend who would um who's a psychotherapist and my dad said said to me once like michael have you ever thought you might have adhd yeah i knew you were gonna say that yeah. and i said well i had actually privately but then he said i was watching a documentary about it and i was looking at all the symptoms i was thinking every one of those mm -hmm. is you and then i had a, did a test with a psychotherapist and said like, yeah highly likely to I've got to start that. I haven't got any diagnosis, mm. but I, I did get a very good score in that test. Mm. And I've got to see the GP, but of course, I keep on forgetting, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I tried yeah. yesterday, but then yeah. there's no bookings online. Yeah. If you could do it online, yeah. but um, they're booked out for a month. Yeah, because um, um, the medicine they give people for ADHD yeah. is opioids. Yeah. So, with, uh, is it opioids? It's got the, like, and no, what was it with this? It's got actual like speed in it. To keep, it's very similar it to does, speed. Yeah, it does the same. Thing. like it, Michael's saying that he didn't get a rush because if you have ADHD it actually does the opposite effects and it calms you down yeah, oh, yeah. so you have an, if you've got ADHD you have a deficiency of dopamine your body your brain doesn't produce mm. the do enough dopamine and then the drugs which are used to treat it um, are very similar to speed mm. cocaine so if someone if you've got ADHD and you take speed or cocaine, then often it's just working like the drug that yeah. corrects your problem. It's like, oh, I could, st like, other people are getting this massive rush, and I'm thinking, I'm getting nothing from this, but I reckon I could sit down and read a good book now. I'd probably get a lot of work done. Yeah. I'm thinking, this is wow. a stunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the, I used to do, use lots of uppers and that for the same sort of reasons, and I've done them ADHD things on, online, and I. I they it come back saying that I've probably got it. So, I, but I don't know. But I, all I know is since I've been doing cold water, my mind's been the best it's ever been, and that is because cold water produces dopamine. If mm. I've had a lack of dopamine and I'm getting it from the cold water, it makes sense. That, yeah, uh, and that might be why I self medicated with uppers all the time. I'd never want to take, never smoked weed, never took anything that tripped me out, and that I just wanted the dopamine all the time, and it was either in the form of cocaine or, or speed or 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 drinks is can, can be an mm. upper, but it brings you down as well doesn't it it does yeah it brings you I mean I think when you went out for drinking I'd really enjoy the first hour or two yeah and then the rest I just wish would never have happened yeah or, or don't <laughs> I remember I love the initial the initial high but yeah. then it was just a slow sort mm. of descent into yeah. absolute misery and chaos yeah well that's the same with with the with, with cocaine as well used to I used to 
like waiting the excitement for waiting for it sounds oh, it's the anticipation yeah and then when it yeah. turned up and do one line then I go back into psychosis mm-hmm. and really fucking paranoid but it was uh, for I was addicted to waiting for it to turn up and then it turned up like fucking like a kid at Christmas which is probably not the best <laughs> no. analogy to put but no. yeah. mm. then you get the boxing day feeling <laughs> yeah <laughs> work tomorrow it's, it's so exciting you've looked forward to this for ages it's turned up you've had your fun and yeah. now it's a bit of cold turkey with yeah. a sort of <laughs> Brussels <and> sprout, <laughs> bubble and sprout, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> and it's a whole year to wait until the next one. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Michael. Well, I think I you're an absolute diving mate. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, thank, thank you for being so open about what you've been through, and um, yeah, really appreciate it. sort of sharing it with us. Really and thanks good. for coming all this way. Yeah. No problem. Love it down here. Love it. So yeah, yeah. Well, have you been there a few times? Yeah, been a few times, yeah. Okay. This is my first time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>